celebration of life for the Bishop Samuel Edward Iglehart, the officers of the Board of Bishops for the Church of God in Christ worldwide are entering the sanctuary as they say their final goodbyes to a member of the college who served with them for 24 years. The executive board for the College of Bishops has entered. The bishops of the state of Texas and Oklahoma now enter the auditorium. Bishop Michael Hart served with these Texas bishops Thank you, Jesus. Secretary of the Church, the Right Reverend J. Harley Lyles.
brothers and sisters, let us stand and receive the presidium. presided by the presiding bishop of our church the presiding bishop and chief apostle the most reverend John Drew Sheard first Assistant Presiding Bishop, the Right Reverend Jerry Wayne Macklin. The Second Assistant Presiding Bishop, the Right Reverend Lawrence Marcellus Wooten. The Secretary for the General Board, the Right Reverend Brandon Burdett Porter. Assistant Secretary, the Right Reverend Michael Eugene Hill. The Right Reverend Prince Earl William Bryant, Sr. today. We received the family for Bishop Eichelhart. David asked a question, Lord, who shall abide in thy holy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? The question was answered with these words. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. 
He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh a reproach against his neighbor. In whose eyes a vile person is condemned, but he who honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. David continued with words of comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us stand and receive the immediate family.
You may be seated. I'm going to ask that the members of the College of Bishops for the Church would please remain standing at this time as the presiding bishop and general board come to remove two symbols of the office of the bishop from the remains of the Right Reverend Samuel Edward Iglehart. My dear brothers and sisters, the Deputy Adjutant General Herman Platt prepares to give to the presiding bishop two symbols of the office, the pectoral cross and the ring. This cross of gold that hung around the bishop's neck was a symbol of his imprisonment for Christ. Bishop Samuel Edward Iglehart was inducted into the College of Bishops in the year of 1997. The cross was a constant reminder that he was a servant for Christ, and he was a servant to the Lord's church and to the Lord's people. The ring worn by Bishop Iglehart symbolized his priestly authority given to him, not only by the church to perform ecclesiastical duties, but by Jesus Christ to feed the flock of God. The presiding bishop now gives these symbols to his daughter, Marilyn Iglehart Littlejohn. The Deputy Adjutant General Herman Platt now prepares to cover the body of Bishop Iglehart with a purple cloth. Purple represents the office of the bishop. The cloth is symbolic of the shroud that was placed upon the body of our Lord at his death according to the 19th chapter of John's Gospel. We celebrate this leader by covering his face also with a napkin. John 20 and 7 teaches us that there was a napkin or face covering placed upon the head of Jesus. The final document placed in the bier with Bishop Iglehart is the Annales Ministeri, Episcopatus et Mortis. It reads, The Chronicle of Ministry, Episcopal, Sea, and Death. Here rests the Right Reverend Samuel Edward, Edward Iglehart, pastor of Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ, San Antonio, Texas, prelate, Texas Southwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, headquartered in Waco, Texas, father, builder, educator, religious and community leader. Born August 2nd, 1937. Called into the gospel ministry, 1961. Ordained as an holy elder, 1968. Consecrated to the bishopric, 1997. Promoted to glory, October 26th. 2021. Our scribe, the Elder Nicholas South, will place one in the beer and give one to the family.
the National Agency prepares to seal, turn, and drape the vessel. Thank you, Jesus. The pall that covers the beer or vessel represents the true servant leadership of this man of God. The bishop believed that the people did not exist to serve him, but rather he existed to serve the people. The life of Bishop Samuel Edward Iglehart will always be celebrated as a courageous soldier in the army of our Lord. Bishop Iglehart fought a good fight. Bishop Iglehart finished his course. Bishop Iglehart kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for him a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give him at that day. Church of God in Christ, let us put our hands together and celebrate the life, celebrate the ministry, celebrate the work, of Bishop Samuel Edward Igerhard. Come on, we can do better. seat the Episcopal adjutant for Bishop Iglehart, the person who served him in life, will now serve him in passing. The Episcopal adjutant, servant leader, Kenneth Davidson, will now be seated. We've come today for a celebration. We've come together today for a celebration. Let us receive the Bishop Brandon Porter, Secretary for the Board of for the General Board. Thank you, Bishop Wells. Come on, let's give God some praise for this tremendous leader. Let's thank God for Bishop Iglehart's life. Come on, you all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. A little more, a little more. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
God bless to our presiding bishop and certainly to the first and second assistant presiding bishops and to the general board and each and every one of you. We're thankful to be able to come and celebrate uh, Uncle Sam, amen, as we affectionately call him. But what a great giant, what a tremendous leader. And our presiding bishop is a churchman, so we want to have church today, amen. I was, I was trapped in the airport last night, but I heard some church last night. Amen. And so he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it looks like we ought to be churching today as well. Bishop Eigelhardt was a churchman. When he invite you to preach, he's still going to preach a little bit. Amen, somebody. And let you know that he still has it as well. We want to celebrate this man of God. We all loved him dearly, and I believe that God will get the glory as many are watching from across the world to also take a glimpse of this wonderful life. Would you at this time uh, endure the music ministry of this jurisdiction with our hymn of comfort, our hymn of comfort, and it is found on page eight of your program. We will understand it better by and by. Will you stand for the hymn of comfort, everyone except the family? Yes. Let's celebrate. Hallelujah. Verse 1. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Slumber skies and howling tempest all succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mists have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. Yes, we will. Following our program on today and this worship experience, invocation by General Board Member Bishop Prince Bryant, who preached incredibly on last night. 
And then following him will be the Old Testament scripture by Bishop David Hall, General Board Member of Memphis, Tennessee. And following him will be the New Testament scripture by Bishop Kobe. Receive them in that order, please. Thank you. Can we just sing the anthem of our church? My soul say yes, yes, yeah, yes, 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 Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, thank you, thank you, yes, Lord. Jesus, yes, Lord, yeah. yes to your will. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, we praise you. We magnify you. We lift up your name. We extol you. We bless your name today. We stand in your presence and in your glory. We pray, God, today that you would uh, look on this homegoing service of your servant. We pray, God, upon this wonderful family, this sainted family, this godly family, this priestly family, this Levitical family, that you would undergird them with your power. Sustain them now. Give them to know that all is well in Jesus' name. We pray for our leader today, Bishop J. Drew Shud. We bless him now. We in Enthuse him with your power and your might. Give him a word for this congregation and this family and this great church. Now, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. From the Holy Word, Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 28 through 31. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they, hey, that wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. And this word is blessed. to the Church of Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, 
at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, yes. and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, yes. and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Yeah. Oh, death, where is your sting? Yeah. Oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, yes. unmovable, yes. always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Standing at this time, Bishop Charles McClellan, general board member from Milwaukee, is going to come with our affirmation of faith, which can be found on page 12. Thank you. Bishop McClellan. The affirmation of our faith we affirm our faith in the Bible, congregation. We affirm our faith in God. We affirm our faith in the blessed hope. We affirm our faith in repentance and salvation. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ. We affirm our faith in the Holy Ghost. We affirm our faith in sanctification. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, by whose indwelling the Christian is able to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. Blessings to you. Amen. We're getting ready for this amazing music ministry. How do you feel? You love the Lord? Amen. Amen. Praise the name of God. And certainly to this awesome family, the Eichelhard has such a prominent name in the church of God in Christ. And I remember years ago, of course, coming and ministering for dead Eichelhard and, and a great man of God. And of course, Bishop Samuel continuing that legacy. Solely praying for all of the siblings, in particular Marilyn and Sharon. It's so good to see you, Sharon. Love you, sweetheart. Praying for you all. I know God is going to strengthen your hand. At this time, this musical choir is going to come and share with us, and we want to let go and let God today. Is that all right? Amen. 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 Will you clap your hands for them as they come with a selection of praise in this homegoing celebration? Thank you. 
his testimony. Why don't you go ahead and say it for the rest of my life. I'm going to serve the Lord. No matter what happens, I'm going to serve the Lord. Come on and praise him, somebody. Lord, Lord, yeah. Whatever I think about Bishop Iglehart, that's his life story. He served the Lord regardless of his illness, his challenges. He was at church, whether he was walking, scooting, however he got there. He was there worshiping God. Is that right, somebody? And I was told that he came the last Sunday and paid the church off. Is that correct? And then said, well, I'm going to go on home and be with Jesus now. I took care of God's house. I'm going to go get in my mansion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, keep working till you die. Come on, tell your neighbor, keep working until you die. Serving the Lord will pay off. Somebody praise him in here. Let's move on. I feel like dancing. I don't know what y'all waiting on. Hey! My God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah! Hey! My God, my God. Hallelujah. Praise him, church. Hallelujah. Glory. sound like the church of God in Christ in here. You know, hold on, brother musicians. I preach here many times, but I remember sometimes Bishop would say, I can't run, but somebody run for me. I can't dance, somebody dance for me. Well, why don't you listen? I got good news for you. I got good news for you. Ain't no diabetes in heaven. Hey! Praise God with Bishop today. Come on, you. Hey. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. We're going to get back here again because our presiding bishop is a preaching machine. Amen, somebody. Lord, have mercy. Thank you 
so very much. I feel churchy to it. If I have to, I'll do it in the parking lot. Amen, somebody. At this time, our second... My God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Now y'all gonna get me in trouble. You can't be taking shifts. If you're gonna do it, we gotta do it all at one time. Are you ready? One, two, three, come on. Come on. One time. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. God is worthy. All right, thank you. Put that horn down. Right now, our second assistant presiding bishop, if your name was Gabriel, I'll let you go and blow it. Our second assistant presiding bishop is going to come to further this worship experience. And that's none other than Bishop Lawrence Wooten out of Missouri. Will you praise God for him as he comes to continue this celebration? Come on, thank God for the father of the general board. Come on, you all. Hallelujah. They say we don't say it's a loss, but we have a lost. Because Bishop Ike Hard lost his diabetes. He lost his pain. He lost his tears. But he's over there. Praising the Lord right now. The words say, give honor to whom honor is due. And it's appropriate that we give honor at this time from our great church with these national tributes. We have from the Department of Women, our saintly supervisor, Mother Barbara McCool Lewis, our general supervisor, that would be represented by Supervisor Gladys Ross, administrative facilitator, followed by the general counsel of pastors and elders, where the administrative assistant, Michael Eady, is the chairman. He will be represented by the right Reverend Prince E. Bryant II, the secretary. The Board of Bishops will be presented by the Right Reverend John Henry Sheard, which is the chairman. He will be represented rather by the Right Reverend William Henry Watson III, the secretary. Then our General Assembly, we have a representative from the General Assembly. Bishop, our General Secretary will cover the General Assembly and our General Church. The Right Reverend Joel Henry Lau, Jr., our General Secretary, followed by the General, the General Board by Bishop Michael Hill. They would come in that order. Let's say amen. Bishop, first assistant Bishop Jerry Macklin, second assistant Bishop Lawrence Wooten, to the entire general board, the presidium of our church, God bless each of you. God bless you. To our visiting bishops and to our Texas bishops, God bless each of you. Certainly to my bishop, Bishop Frank Faneuil, Administrative assistants, superintendents, pastors, elders, and men, all national officers, God bless you. Certainly I on our sainted mother on today, Mother Barbara McCool Lewis, she was unable to make this trip. 
but she sends her love, her prayers to this family and to this great jurisdiction, her assistance, to her assistance, to the bishop's wives, God bless each of you, the supervisors, the district missionaries, and all the women of the Lord, to this bereaved Iger Hart family. Mother Lewis was unable to come today because she sends her love and prayers to you all and the women's department of this jurisdiction. The Bible said, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saint. Bishop Iger Hart was a saint of the Lord. He loved the Lord and he loved God's people. He led Texas Southwest jurisdiction with spirituality, with dignity, honor, and respect. He loved his jurisdiction, and this jurisdiction loved him. What a leader he was, a gospel preacher. He supported the national church and loved the church of God in Christ, our church. Well, we'll miss seeing Bishop Igerhart, his sense of humor, and his style of leadership. Bishop Igerhart fought a good fight, and he finished his course. He kept the faith, and now he sleeps. To Mother Yolanda Ford, Mother Lewis sends her love to you and, to, and her prayers and to the entire women's department. I must say, Mother Ford is a member of the National Executive Board, and she's doing an excellent job, and we want you to know that God is on your side. At this time, Mother McLean is coming to read the resolution from the International Women's Department. Will all of the supervisors please stand as she reads the resolution? Family, remember, casting all of your cares upon the Lord, for he careth for you. May God bless each of you is my prayer. Thank you, Mother Ross. The International Department of Women, Church of God in Christ, Inc., Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis, General Supervisor, Bishop J. Drew Shears, Presiding Bishop and Chief Apostle, Bishop Charles E. Blake, Sr., Presiding Bishop and Chief Apostle Emeritus, Mother Willie May Rivers, General Supervisor Emerita. Resolution. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. John 14, 2. Whereas it is the distinct honor of the International Department of Women to pay tribute to the life and legacy of Bishop Samuel Edward Eigelhart, prelate of the Texas Southwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, whom our Heavenly Father has called from labor to reward on October 26, 2021, and whereas our hearts are saddened to hear the, that Bishop Eigelhard has taken a journey home to be with the Lord, we sorry not, even as others which have no hope, because the earthly transition of a saint of God is a promotion. And whereas Bishop Eigelhard cherished his late wife, Glorious Cassie Eisen Eigelhard, whom he was married to for 40 years, and the patriarch of six children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, 
He has served as pastor of five churches, including Praise Cathedral, Church of God in Christ in San Antonio, Texas, where he pastored since 1997. Leading it to celebrate its 90th church anniversary only days before his transition. And whereas Bishop Eigelhard faithfully served the Church of God in Christ in various positions, including chairman of the Licensed Ministers Board, president of the jurisdiction YPWW department, district superintendent of Greater Temple District, first administrative assistant to the late Bishop T.D. Eigelhardt, National Special Assistant to the Chair of Board of Bishops, Executive Board Member of Board of Bishops, Member of the Texas Council of Bishops, the Prelate of the Texas Southwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. He was a kingdom builder and an anointed saint of the Lord. And whereas Bishop Eigelhard was an ardent supporter of the multifaceted ministries of the International Department of Women and its Women's International Convention, his wisdom, understanding, and kindness to those with whom he came in contact left an indelible impression and shall always be a living memorial to him. And whereas it is uh, fitting that we, the International Department of Women, pause in honor Bishop Iger Hart's stalwart service of the Lord, be it resolved that we express gratitude to God for having shared with us the life of Bishop Samuel Edward Eigelhardt. Be it further reserved that we extend to this brief biological church and ecclesiastical families our sincere love, concern, and prayers, knowing that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. For God has promised, I will never leave you comfortless. I will come to you, John 14, 18. Be it finally resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy placed in the archives of the International Department of Women, Church of God in Christ, Inc. Prayerfully submitted the fourth day of November in the year of our Lord, 2021, Mother Barbara McCool Lewis, General Supervisor, Supervisor Dr. Wilma J. Hewitt, First Assistant General Supervisor, Supervisor Vanessa Winbush Gadlin, Second Assistant General Supervisor, Supervisor Mary Jane Walton, Third Assistant General Supervisor. God bless you and thank you. Protocol has been well established, uh, but at the expense of being repetitious, we honor uh, the greatest leader in the kingdom. Both transcendent and transformative in his leadership, will you help me celebrate the chief apostle and presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, and to the 12 apostles that lead our great church, and as a point of personal privilege to my own leader and father, the Bishop Prince Bryant Sr., to the clergy gathered to this family. Uh, we bring you glad tidings from our chairman of the General Council of Pastors and Elders, Chairman Michael Eady. At this time, I'm going to ask the Presbyter, 
pastors and elders of the Church of God in Christ, if you would stand now. The resolution. General Council of Pastors and Elders, Church of God in Christ, Incorporated. National Headquarters, 938 Mason Street, Memphis, Tennessee. Servant of God, well done. Life on earth, well won. Entering the joy begun. The battle is over, the victory won. Whereas we celebrate the pleasure of our Heavenly Father to translate from the labor of this life into the church triumphant, the Right Reverend Samuel Edward Igerhart. And whereas the Chairman Michael Eady, the elected officers, uh, the executive committee members of the General Council of Pastors and Elders of the Church of God in Christ worldwide, pause to commemorate this life and express our love and respect to this beloved celebrating family. And whereas we acknowledge the Right Reverend Samuel Edward Igerhard as a loyal member of the Church of God in Christ, as a leader par excellent, a Texas general and prelate of the Southwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of Texas for almost 25 years. And as pastor of the Children's Memorial Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ in San Antonio, Texas. Whereas we further extend to the family our prayers that they will look to the hills for the God of all mercies and the Father of all comfort. Know assuredly that the Royal Igerhart family, the great state of Texas, and the Church of God in Christ at large will long feel the absence of the Right Reverend Samuel Edward Igerhart. And finally resolved that a copy of this resolution be placed in the official annals of the General Council of Pastors and Elders and a copy presented to the family of the Right Reverend Samuel Edward Igerhart. Respectfully submitted officers and members of the General Council of Pastors and Elders of the Church of God in Christ Incorporated. Administrative Assistant Superintendent Michael Eady, Chairman, Superintendent Marcus Alway, Senior Vice Chairman, Superintendent Prince E.W. Bryant II, Executive Secretary, Superintendent William Ward, Jr., Treasurer. And may you feel the strength of the Levitical tribe of the Church of God in Christ. Honor and deference to our great leader, the Bishop J. Drew Sheard, to the entire general board. Uh, at this moment, I would ask that all of the members of the Church of God in Christ Board of Bishops, if you would stand with me on this at this time. We stand here to represent our esteemed chairman, the Bishop John Henry Sheard. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We, the member of the Board of Bishops of the Church of God in Christ Incorporated, in a gesture of solidarity, stand along with our chairman and the elected officials and the executive board to resolve the following to the family of Bishop Samuel Edward Igelhard. Whereas God in his great power has removed from our midst a Christian brother and spiritual father who was faithful and a help to his fellow men. Those who were encouraged by his words of wisdom will long feel his influence his loyalty, his friendship, and community service shall be his legacy. 
He was loved by many, respected by more, and known as a builder, a visionary, and a shrewd businessman. Bishop Iglehart exemplified the spirit of excellence in ministry. And as a result-oriented leader, he expected every leader and ministry to serve with distinction and operate in excellence. Whereas, at the demise of Bishop Iglehart, he served as a former member of the executive board of the Church of God in Christ Board of Bishops, the prelate of Texas Southwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ. He was a pastor of the Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ, formerly known as Childress Memorial. The body of Christ has suffered a great loss. Bishop Iglehart's character, his loyalty to God, church, and humanity shall ever be recognized. Bishop left his imprint on the city of San Antonio as he was known for his community involvement. His service expressed the gravitas of him being a prince in the Lord's church. Be it resolved that we express the sympathy that we feel personally and collectively to his family, both biological and ecclesiastical. His encourage, or we encourage all to rely on the comfort of our gracious God of heaven and earth. Be it resolved that our church and this world has been a better place because this churchman, the Bishop Samuel Edward Iglehart, blessed us with his presence and his godly example. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy be kept in the archives of the Board of Bishops, Church of God in Christ Incorporated, World Headquarters, Memphis, Tennessee. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God, Hebrews 4 and 9. Humbly submitted the fourth day of November 2021 by the hand of the chairman, the Bishop John Henry Sheard, Bishop William H. Watson III, Secretary. God bless you. Just before I come, I'm going to ask that the Bishop Connor come to represent the Judiciary Board of the Church of God in Christ. Give honor to our esteemed leader, the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, to members of the general board, to elected officials of our church worldwide, to all of you, God's children. I bring you greetings from the Chief Justice and members of the Judiciary Board that we extend to this family, the Iglehart family, our sincere condolences for the life of a man that lived and loved God. He would often say it is your attitude that will determine your altitude. When I first became a bishop, he said, Connor, remember, it's your attitude that will determine where you go in this church. Bishop Samuel Edward Iglehart was a man of distinction. He loved the Church of God in Christ. He loved the Board of Bishops. And any time you saw him, he had a smile on his face. And you can't write the history of the Church of God in Christ without saying Iglehart. I don't think you can do it. Either you'll mention the name T.D. Iglehart or Samuel Iglehart, but you can't write the history of Texas without an Iglehart being in the message. 
We thank God that he lived and he demonstrated as a leader he cared for his flock. My nephew is such a person, and I'm going to ask Elder Derek Connor to stand. He's in the choir. So I have direct connection. That's my brother's son. We love the Eagle Hearts. Come on, give Bishop Samuel Edward Eigelhart a round of applause. We can do that, can't we? He was a leader, and they're rejoicing on the other side because he lived a life of godliness. God bless you, family, and the entire church of God in Christ. God be with you. God bless you. There are two gentlemen, one by the name of Johnson Oatman and the other by the name of Charles Gabriel, are responsible for the writing of a hymn called I'm Pressing On, The Upward Way, New Heights I'm Gaining Every Day. One of the stanzas of that hymn states, I want to live above the world where Satan's darts at me are hurled. Though faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. But the other verse says, I want to scale the utmost heights and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till rest I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. If you believe today that Bishop Samuel Edward Aglehart has reached that higher ground, will you give God a 30-second praise in this house this afternoon? We give deference and honor to our presiding bishop, the Bishop J. Drew Shear, to Bishop Jerry Wayne Macklin and Bishop Lawrence Wooten, to the secretaries and to the members of the general board, to all of our general officers and fellow bishops. I also want to recognize the chairman of our General Assembly, the Bishop L.F. Thuston, who is unable to be here today, but sends his regards. To all of our supervisors and to all who have gathered, and especially to the Aglehart family, I greet you this day in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There are numerous resolutions and condolences that have been sent to the Aglehart family from the Church of God in Christ. And obviously, you know, I cannot recognize all of them. However, the jurisdictional secretary shared with me a booklet which he has prepared of the resolutions and condolences, and he will present them to the family at a later time. At this time, I ask, with the exception of the general board, for all elected and appointed officers, department heads, and national appointees, will you please stand? These are appointees, national elected officers, and members of the Church of God in Christ. The resolution, the excerpts from the resolution that I will be reading represents the body of the Church of God in Christ. Resolution of love and respect for Bishop Samuel Edward Ivelhart. Understanding that the will of God is just, it is with heavy hearts that we celebrate the final phase in the life of Bishop Ivelhart. Bishop Iglehart was a treasured and beloved son of the Church of God in Christ. He served the Church of God in Christ with relentless zeal and an unyielding determination. He was a statesman, a churchman, and an active and dedicated member of the General Assembly. An attempt to chronicle the tremendous contributions made by Bishop Iglehart to the Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ, the Texas Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, and to the entire Church of God in Christ would be an exercise in futility. 
He touched the lives of thousands, and through his preaching and teaching, he instilled faith and hope into the lives of all who heard him. Whereas Bishop Igo Hart enhanced the lives of all who knew him, and an indelible impact of his life will remain in our hearts and our memories forever, Therefore, be it resolved, the presiding bishop, the general board, general officers, leadership of the Church of God in Christ, honor this giant and general of a man. And this resolution is an expression of love, sympathy, and support to the Eigelhart family and to the church family. Be it further resolved that the leadership and the constituency of the Church of God in Christ will embrace the Eigelhart family in prayer, knowing that the God of all comfort will sustain you by his promises and with his presence and be it finally resolved that Bishop Samuel Edward Iglehart possessed a faith and profound hope in Jesus Christ and has realized the benefits of his preparation in this life and now is in the presence of the Lord. Given under my hand in the great seal of the Church of God in Christ this fourth day of November in the year of our Lord, uh, 2021, and it will be signed by the presiding bishop. Iglehart family, we thank you for sharing Bishop with us. Our prayers are with you. God bless you. We do give honor to our chief apostle today and to the presidium of our great church. I'm going to ask the members of the general board if they will stand with me, all except our presiding bishop. Church of God in Christ Incorporated, World Headquarters, Memphis, Tennessee. Resolution. The Right Reverend Samuel Edward Iglehart, prelate Texas Southwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. And the king said unto his servants, Know ye not that there is a prince and a great man fallen this day? 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 38. Whereas in accordance with his tender mercies, God, who is infinite in wisdom, has seen fit to remove from our midst this general in the faith and fellow Episcopate, the Bishop Samuel Edward Iglehart, and has therefore promoted him from the church militant to the church triumphant. And whereas, in honor and glorious recognition of the untiring faithfulness and loyalty Bishop Samuel Edward Iglehart displayed in the nearly five decades of pastoral ministry to the Holy Tabernacle Church of God in Christ in Bay City, Texas, and the Praise Cathedral, formerly known as the Childress Memorial Church of God in Christ in San Antonio, Texas. And whereas we celebrate the stellar service and unparalleled tenure of the Bishop Samuel Edward Iglehart as the jurisdiction of prelate of the Texas Southwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, having served for many years after faithfully succeeding his father, the late Bishop Thaddeus D. Iglehart, continuing the legacy of Sachase's service and loyalty to the national work and ministry of the Church of God in Christ. Therefore, be it resolved that the Presidium, General Officers, and National Officers of the Church of God in Christ express their heartfelt sympathy and offer their prayers and unyielding support to the Iglehart family, the members of the Praise Cathedral family, and the Texas Southwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Be it further resolved that we will honor, remember, and memorialize this visionary leader and continually look back with pride and gratitude at his example. Be it finally resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family of Bishop Iglehart, and a copy will be stored in the archives of the National Church, submitted in humility and love on this fourth day of November in the year of our Lord 2021. His Grace, the Most Reverend John Drew Sheard, 
presiding bishop and chief apostle, the eighth in succession, the Bishop Brandon Burdett Porter, secretary of the general board, Church of God in Christ Incorporated. God bless. We praise God for those tributes and let it go on record, the have has not been told. Amen. We have with us today, honoring this man of God, a state Senator Roland Gitzeritz. Ask him to stand, please. And also, State Representative Barbara Gerwin Hawkins. Let's give God a hand praise for them here <laughs> celebrating with us our great leader, Bishop Idaho. God bless you. We're going to have a selection for this marvelous choir. After that, we will receive our first assistant presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ. The Bishop Jerry Wayne Macklin will come after the choir selection. God bless you.
the Lord bless each of you today. What a great service of celebration of life. Would you join me and let's give God praise for this service today. Thank you, choir, for blessing us and to all who have shared and participated in this service. May God's peace be with every one of you. To this grand family, and I feel connected to them in so many ways, I want you to know that this entire church is praying for you today. I will not ask all of my relatives from this church to stand because it would disturb this whole setting. So I'm gonna ask all of my kin folks to remain seated. I too, like Bishop Connors, have family in this church and I want them to know I love them much. Bishop Algelhard had a heart as big as Texas. Lady Macklin and I will always count it a blessed privilege for the times that we came and were invited to share at both sanctuaries. We will long remember the heart of Bishop Aguilar. I know that normally when you travel, they give you a hotel suite, make it nice. But upon one of my trips here, I did not stay at the hotel at the Hyatt or the Marriott. I stayed at the Aguilar Estates. <laughs> now, brothers, don't get jealous. Just <laughs> hang in there. Your day is coming. It was a grand experience indeed. He called me up after I had come to the church and had returned home, and he called me up and said, Mac, I'm coming to California, coming to your anniversary, church anniversary. He said, I'll be out there. I'm going to bring a few folks with me. I thought he meant he was bringing his adjutants and a couple of the ministers. I looked up, and 60-some people were getting off the plane. I told you he had a heart as big as Texas. What a time we had indeed. A few months later, I got a call from his anniversary committee inviting me to come. But somehow I knew they were not just looking for me. I went to my choir. I said, you all get ready, we're going to Texas. Some of them said, Bishop, we need more time. I said, uh-uh, uh-uh, don't even think it. Get your ticket, and we're leaving on such and such a date. And we tried to bring back to Texas as many as had come to California. It was an instant fellowship. Isn't it wonderful that we can enjoy each other down here? And I know you're looking forward to having that fellowship up there. We will love and treasure the memory of this giant who had a heart as big as Texas. There in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, we find these words, and the sons of Issachar were men who had understanding of the times, and they knew what Israel ought to do. A few months ago, it became obvious that we were going to need a leader for the Church of God in Christ. We went through what we go through. But God directs the affairs of men. And he holds their hearts in his hand. When that process was over, God raised up a man among us, a son of the church. And all of us can now testify that he is 
a son of the church who has understanding of the times and knows what the church ought to do. Just a few months ago, he stood at this very pulpit. And did he preach the gospel? I said, did he preach the gospel? Preach that sermon that uh, God will save you from embarrassment. Now that I've said it, you can't preach it. <laughs> Most of us who are pastors understand and we know we invite people to preach for us when we're there. But most of us are very careful about inviting someone to preach in our church when we're not there. Do I have a witness? Our presiding bishop preached in this church when Bishop Alcohart was here. And now he returns to preach this celebration of life now that he's not here. He is a man that has understanding of the times and he knows what the church ought to do. Following the selection, the next voice you will hear will be that of the man that God has laid hands upon. And aren't you glad that we don't have to weary and we don't have to worry because there is a leader among us now who knows what the church ought to do. Following this selection, the next voice you will hear will be that very distinct voice Chief Apostle of the Church of God in Christ, the Bishop J. Drew Sheard, presiding bishop of our church. When he comes, we will all stand at that time and give God praise for the leader that God has given us. Thank you.
God's been good to you, tell him thank you. If the Lord ever made a way for you, tell him thank you. If the Lord ever opened a door for you, tell him thank you. Now just look at somebody and tell them after all I've been through, tell them after all the devil tried to do to me, make it emphatic. Tell them I still have my joy. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of the Lord said, Amen. God bless you. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. I certainly want to give honor to the God of my salvation. I thank him because I'm saved and sanctified, filled with God's precious Holy Ghost and that with the mighty burning fire. And I do speak in tongue as the Spirit give utterance. Is there anybody here that's sanctified? Hallelujah. We certainly thank God for our first assistant, presiding bishop, the one and only Bishop Jerry Wayne Macklin. Let's praise God for him. Thank you, Bishop, for your support and that wonderful introduction. To our second assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Lawrence Wooten. Let's praise God for him. <laughs> to our general board members, Bishop Brandon Porter, Bishop Michael Hill, Bishop Prince Bryan, Bishop David Hall, Bishop Malcolm Colby, Bishop C.H. McClellan, and Bishop John Mark Johnson. Let's praise God for the general board. <laughs> To our general secretary, Bishop Joel Lyles, Bishop Connor from the Judiciary Board, Bishop William Watson, who is representing the Board of Bishops. Uh, we praise God for Bishop Lemuel Thuston in his absence and Bishop John H. Sheard in his absence. And to our saintly mother, the one and only Mother Barbara McCool Lewis, and we praise God for her administrative facilitators, Mother Ross, who is here representing her the pastors and elders, all of the bishops, all of the superintendents, and to all of you, my father's children, we praise God for this wonderful family, this wonderful family. The Eigelhart family is a tremendous family. We thank you. Bishop S.E. Eigelhart, of course, uh, these um, other guys that were uh, trying to be close to him, called him Uncle Sam. And I called him Uncle S.E. so he'd know it was me. And, uh, and uh, was just a tremendous individual. He called me one day when he's in the hospital and he had the phone up and I said, what you doing, Uncle S.E.? He said, oh man, they got me in here. <laughs> And uh, I loved him so much. He was a tremendous encourager, a tremendous supporter. And uh, of course, when I received the call, I was in total shock because just wasn't expecting it. But family, you know you have my prayers. And uh, if there's anything that uh, I or my wife can do to assist you through this period, please don't hesitate to call. I realize that our time is getting away from us, so uh, if you'll bear with me for just a few minutes, and I promise not to be before you very long, I want to call your attention to a scriptures that uh, to some scriptures that are found in the book of Revelations, the second chapter, and the eighth through the tenth verses. If you'd be so kind, everyone except the family, to please stand in reverence to the word of God. God bless you, Bishop Copeland. I'm glad to see you, my friend. The word of the Lord says, and unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of these things which thou 
shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, uh, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulations ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Let's place some emphasis on that latter clause of the 10th verse. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. I want to talk to you for the next few fleeting moments from the subject, be thou faithful. Be thou faithful. You may sit in the presence of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, this epistle has a new pathos and significance if we connect it with the blessed minister named Polycarp, who is noted with almost certainty as the angel or chief minister of the church in Smyrna. He was the disciple of John Irenaeus, who lived a generation later, told how in his early boyhood he had heard from the lips of Polycarp that John, or what John, had told him about our Lord's life, his conversation, and even his earthly ministry. Saints, how rewarding the comfort of this epistle must have been to the minister in this closing scene of his life when at 86 he was sentenced to death. Notice how every line of it had a message for him as well as for all who are called to follow in his footsteps, not only as Christian ministers, but as Christian soldiers. The Savior reminded him that beyond the suffering of this brief life that a crown awaited him which would abundantly reward his fidelity. My brothers and sisters, this life can be a tedious journey for a saint. There is pressure everywhere. There are malignant influences and forces working against us on every angle. There are smiling faces, but conniving spirits. When you look at our present world, we note that it has been defaced and marred by sin. Sin has converted this world into a region of woe and a shadow of death, morning by morning, day by day, evening by evening, and night by night, we're faced with the results of sin, which in turn produce uh, sometimes a suffering life. And yet as saints, uh, we are admonished to endure hardness as a good soldier. As ministers of the gospel, we are expected to preach the gospel, whether it's in season or out of season. We're expected to challenge the sinner to enlist in the army of the Lord. As ministers, we are expected to address police brutality, racial injustice, and the rise of inequity among our people. We must further note that our financial institutions are insecure, our educational system is subpar, and our medical systems have very few answers for the maladies of our bodies. Yes, these challenges cause us to suffer. Challenges from our fellow man from those who are within and without seem downright unfair. We give it all we've got and yet sometimes we feel like we're not up to the task. We live in a world where we are failing our young, mistreating our seniors and have simply said to those in between to get it the best way you can. Yet we're admonished to be faithful. The ecosystem is bad. Our water is polluted. Our clouds are infested with unquestionable germs. Sickness is in the land. And sickness, my brothers and sisters, is the fruit of sin. Pain is the offspring of iniquity. And I don't care who you are, you can't get away 
away from sickness. This world in which we live is plagued with diseases, and yet we are admonished to be faithful. When we step outside these palatial walls of our sanctuary, we discover an ugly world, hating God and hating his people, persecuting bitter, malignant tongues, devouring spirit, ravenous as wild beasts, and hateful as demons. In this world, we're lied on, mistreated, buked, and scorned. In this world, we're talked about as sure as you're born, and yet we're admonished to be faithful. In this world, our peers turn on us. Our friends forsake us and won't give us a chance. In this world, we're blindsided by those we trust. And then it doesn't stop in the world, but it that ugly spirit seeps into the church. Our so-called brethren challenge our commitment because one is possessed of an uninformed understanding, another an unsound judgment, a third a stubborn disposition, a fourth a way with a hasty temper, but yet we are admonished to remain faithful. Job said in his book in the 14th chapter in the first verse that man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Man from from the very nature of his birth is frail and mortal suffering and sin is in his life for he is born of a woman and here we must make allusions to the sentence pronounced on evil like parent like child two of the evils resulting to humanity from that birth are mortality of a few days man ever since the fall has been short-lived. Uh, Jacob's testimony in the 47th chapter of Genesis in the ninth verse at the age of 130 years old said, few and evil have uh, uh, the, e the days of the years of my life been, but our lesson text tells us uh, to be thou faithful. The, the second evil is suffering. Now, for Job said that the these days are full of trouble. Man's life on earth is not merely sprinkled with trouble, but it's saturated with trouble. The first thing disclosed by scripture after the fall is Adam and Eve crying over a son slaughtered by the hand of his own brother. In man's history, even under an economy of mercy and the operation of grace, we find the records of blood and tears. These days, my brothers and sisters, are few and evil. This is the description of most men's lives. There is trouble both inside and outside. The disquietude and unrest of the natural man's daily experience is challenging. Man's soul is a sea continually agitated by the wind of passion and yet in spite of all these things we are admonished to be thou faithful the winds of passion consist of death and death itself is a prominent element in the troubles of life and life is clouded by the fear and apprehension of death both in respect to ourselves and our loved one trouble finds the inroads in to the domestic or social circles of man, reverse of fortune, poverty, and want, not to mention the trouble that is superinduced by our own conduct. Trouble as man's lot on earth is a fact of universal experience, and someone has eloquently noted that uh, the world is an abode which if make thee smile today will make thee weep tomorrow. But we as saints and certainly as ministers of the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ are admonished to be thou 
all faithful. However, there is an inspiring words of our text. Even Peter's crown of glory and Paul's crown of righteousness seem to fade in comparison with the crown of life. The thought of it enabled Polycarp to appreciate the ministry and suffering that he had endured. Be thou faithful unto death. I realize that in different versions, Brother Bishops of the Bible, the scripture says until death. However, the truth of the matter is that it says unto death. Unto means facing death and beyond. Unto means when it looks like death is looming in our atmosphere. The challenge is to be faithful. That means when sickness comes, we must be faithful. When disappointments come, we must be faithful. When life-threatening situations invade our space, we must be faithful. Uh, I wish somebody would help me preach and just look at your neighbor and say, be faithful. My brothers and sisters, as I come to the close, we don't have to look at Polycarp, the chief minister in Smyrna, to observe a servant who has been faithful unto death. I challenge you to look at S.E. Iglehart. He has been fighting sickness for some time, but yet he remained faithful. The challenges of his personal life, the loss of his wife, separation from his family a hospital stays that appeared like they were his end but yet he remained faithful when the enemy tried to discourage him by total devastation of his church building he yet remained faithful when his physical condition under normal circumstances would dictate that he quit he yet remained faithful he very successful Successfully led this congregation in building this new edifice. And I'm sure that the enemy said, you've done enough. But S.E. Iglehart said, my work ain't over. I would imagine he took to heart the words of the fourth chapter of 1 Peter and the 13th verse when it said, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad with exceeding joy. He said, I got work to do. I got to liquidate this mortgage, not always feeling the best, but he remained faithful. And when he completed his task, he said like the great apostle, I have fought a good fight and I finished my course so my brothers and sisters Bishop Iglehart preaches to us today don't give up and don't throw in the towel for weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning be not weary in well doing for you shall reap if you faint not and even though the suffering in his path seemed unbearable. I can hear Paul saying for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, they are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. But I need to tell you something. You ain't seen nothing yet and it doth not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is that's why every soldier needs to dot every I you need to cross every T you need to make sure that there's a punctuation at the end of your every sentence because payday is coming after a while for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love
love and let us not be weary in well doing. Help me say for in due season ye shall reap if you faint not. Therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. So I got to stop here, Porter. But let me tell you something. If when you give the best of your service uh, telling the world uh, that the Savior has come. Uh, be not dismayed uh, when men don't believe you. Uh, he'll understand uh, and say well done. Uh, oh, when I come uh, to the end of my journey, uh, weary of life, uh, and the battle is fought, uh, and the victory is won, uh, bearing the staff, uh, and the cross of redemption he'll understand and say well done I shall wear a crown when it's all over I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over where you're going I'm going to a place where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest and all the saints of the ages shall sit at his feet and be blessed well done well done that good and faithful servant well done come on somebody give him praise yeah Somebody give God praise right where you are. Yee! Somebody ought to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise right where you are. Let's praise God for the life of Bishop Samuel Edward Igelhart. Everyone except the family is standing. thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life well done bishop well done the Texas Southeast Southwest, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> the Texas Southwest ecclesiastical jurisdiction is in great hands. General Board Member Bishop Prince Bryan and the Bishop C.H. McClellan will serve as my assistants to make sure that the jurisdiction is taken good care of. Honorable men, you don't have to worry. They won't be raping the treasure. They won't be mistreating the people of God. We're gonna respect the work. Bishop Iglehart was a genius. We're gonna respect his wishes. He made plans when he would leave this earth. 
and we're going to follow them to, to the best of our ability to make sure that the legacy continues. This wonderful church, Praise Cathedral. Of course, I am your pastor now, but Bishop Rhodes is going to be assisting me. under the auspices of Bishop Bryan and Bishop McClellan. Everybody relax. You're in good hands. Hallelujah. I want to say that I do this committal at the end of the service because um, I believe that the actual site where you will lay our dear uncle is a family time. I'm not being insensitive. I, I don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> but I believe it's a family time. I know how I was when I go to the interment of my loved ones. Many times I don't want nobody to see how much I'm going to cry and snot. And I wish people just hadn't come. And I want to leave that as a very private family time for the immediate family and perhaps some of the church members. For as much as it is pleased, Almighty God, to take out of this world our deceased Samuel Edward Iglehart, we commit his body to Mother Earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and life and the life in the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like him to his own glorious body, according to the workings whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Our benediction, our adjutant general will come at this time. Grace, mercy, and peace rest, rule, and abide with each and every one. And the people of the Lord said, Amen. Our adjutants will now de tabernacle the beer. This is the church of God in Christ this is the church of God in Christ oh you can join in you've got to be born this is the church of God in Christ I love the church of God
We've got to learn to give God a new praise every Sunday. I can't give him for what happened in 1946, but I can thank him for what's happening right now. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. And every once in a while, Something begin to move on the inside. And I find out I want to give God a new praise. Yeah. I don't care who you are, where you've been, but your praise should not be the same praise that last week. 
because this is another day that the Lord has kept me free from sin and shame. And so I, I forgot, let me tell you, I'm going to give him a new praise. care what you said when you start giving up new praise something begin to move things begin to act up oh y'all don't catch me you don't catch me see first of all what Paul was defining was that we're not robots you see if you had robots then they would all be in unison but see you, you got to watch it because see somebody said yes Lord Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Somebody said, give me more, Lord. Thank you for what you did for me. Because it all works in unison. That we know that Jesus is the head, but I just dropped by to praise him. Now touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do. But I come to praise him. Oh. 